Come on, mama dog. Come on, puppy dogs. Come on, puppy dogs. Come on, babies. Come on, babies. Come on. Hi. Come here, little Midge. Come here, Midge. Oh, there's my girls. Are you close to girls? Yeah, these are my girls. This is Madge. Oh, hi, Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Hi, baby. And this is Midge. These are the two puppies out of this litter of beagles that we have right now, out of ladies' litter, that I am going to... Oh, goodness gracious! That I am going to keep forever. So this is Midge, and this is Madge, like I just said. Oh, hi, 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 hi. A little bit of the history on these is um, beagles are used for rabbit hunting. So if you don't know how that's done, rabbits have a home territory of about three acres that they will not leave. So the beagles can get on their track, on the trail, by scenting and bark as they go along that trail, and the, uh, the rabbit will stay in that area and circle, and then the hunter can either just for sport watch their dogs work and watch the rabbits run or they can actually hunt the rabbit and me and my grandpa did that as a hobby from the time i was in diapers all the way till the time he died uh mm -hmm. 10 years ago mm -hmm. well what we would do every year was we had our pack of dogs which was um arky motor uh midge madge queenie and uh they were our best dogs and then every year we'd go down south missouri um, in the poorer areas where they would still use beagles as deer dogs illegally and the ones that would run rabbits they would sell to us for like 10 bucks we would take them back up to the house in st louis where grandpa lived and work on them train them teach them to, to their commands and to mind and then we would sell them during hunting season as rabbit dogs on 1987 we bought a dog named sam and he ended up being better than any of our permanent dogs that we kept. He was, Arky was our best dog at the time, and Sam blew Arky out of the water. He was the best beagle we'd seen ever at that time. Well, he also reproduced that good. Sam lived for 18 years and was able to be hunted for 17 hunting seasons. And for that 18 years, we bred all of our females to Sam. So their great, great, seven times great grandpa is Sam. <laughs> so then Sam had, uh, a dog named Son of Sam, who was probably the best direct descendant of Sam. Then he eventually had a dog named Anna, that was my dog, that was the best dog of all of the line. Mm -hmm. She was sweet. She was sweet and she was an awesome hunter. She had the best nose of any beagle, even better than Sam. Uh, Anna was the best dog of that line by, by far. Well then Anna had a dog named, a female named Cece. And then Cece had a female named uh, Ginger. And then Ginger had another female named Anna. Uh, and then that is how uh, we bred Lady, the mama of these dogs. Well now, all of those weren't mine, but like when I had uh, Anna's litter, or Lady's litter, Ginger was still young enough and in good shape that I didn't really need one of the pups. So I gave her to my friend Hooch. And when when Grandpa died, I gave his best dog, Major, which is also out of the Sam line, but very distant from Lady, back uh, to Hooch. And he raised an, a pup named Buck out of him. And then ended I ended up buying Buck and Lady back last year because I was out of my own line, but I had placed them with friends like hooch where I knew where my bloodline was and I crossed those two back together to get this litter of pups so this is double bred my bloodline since grandpa's gone now I call it my bloodline uh, <laughs> that I can trace all the way back multiple generations on the father's side and the mother's side but I was getting a little <laughs> long-winded and I'm very excited and I'm hoping to get another dog as good as Anna oh, come on, baby. so just like with with uh, grandpa's dogs when he died and just like with lady, I'm gonna place the male pups with really good friends and family of mine, for just giving them to them so that if I ever, you know, six, eight, 10 years down the line need to uh, make another cross to keep my bloodline going, I'll know where some of the males are. So Ronald and Donald are going to my very good friend, Brian Parker, and we like to run rabbits together and we'll meet up and train them together and and uh, I'll always be a part of their lives that way. 
and then the little white face mail we're going to give to Emory's sister's kids. She has uh, five kids yep. right now and with One a sixth on the way. On the way. Yep. <laughs> and they've been wanting a puppy for over a year. Last Christmas they got a dog house as their Christmas present and a promise to get them a puppy and they never got them a puppy. So <laughs> this year we're going to give them this puppy and uh, so we'll always be a part of its life too. They all ran away. Come here, puppies. Come here, puppies. Come on. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, good puppies. Good puppies. Oh Come on, back up. Good puppies. Good puppies. Good puppies. Hi, dear. Come on, girls. Okay, so for one last time, we'll show you my girls. We'll show each of them to them, babe. Okay. Like they're so cute. So, here's Midge. Hi, Midge. Come here, Madge. Come here, puppies. Come here, puppies. Here's Madge. So they'll be staying with us. Yep, Midge and Madge are staying with us. This is the one going to my sister-in-law and the five kids, so they'll get to name him. And this is Ronald and Donald. <laughs> or Ron and Don. Or Ronnie and Donnie. Probably Ronnie and Donnie for good calling names. Is your friend okay with those names? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can assume why the old man would like those names. We won't get into it. <laughs> But uh, that's they'll be great dogs, they're and I'm so gonna help cute. them train them. I think this one's the prettiest. I mean, they're all pretty, but he's gorgeous. You think he's the prettiest oh of the gosh. litter? He's getting I don't prettier know. and prettier. Yeah, he kind of is, but okay. I, I really like. How oh, I'm in of the boys. Yeah, I've met how Madge is looking. Oh, I'm, I I just meant of the boys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, so let's go meet the rest of our dogs. Okie dokie. Okay, those of you that have been following the channel for a while <laughs> know about my border collies. So this is kind of a sad story though because this is Sissy and Sissy's just about a six month old pup and I have not, I have really neglected her training. Hi, so I do not have her commands trained in her yet because I've been so busy uh, with all the horse stuff and farm stuff and drought stuff. But I mean, she's a good pet right now and, and friendly and just a ball of energy. But she is out of my dog Rhonda. And anybody that knows the channel has watched Rhonda work. Rhonda's a fully, not fully trained, but fairly well trained herding dog. You've seen her work the pony on the Pony, pony Wars episodes. The story behind Rhonda is I bought her when I first bought this farm and it was, and my idea was it was gonna be a cattle farm. We tried that for a year or two and uh, it just didn't make any money. There was no financial incentive to, to try to farm cattle with 160 acres. So. When the cows left, my feedlot uh, guy that, or not feedlot, but the, the guy where I bought my cattle feed knew how promising Rhonda was and how she, I had her trained pretty good at that point. So he bought her from me and gave her a good home. <laughs> Our, the deal he and I had, since I really liked Rhonda and didn't really want to sell her, was he would give me a pup back someday when he bred her. Well, it had been about seven years and he had never gave me a pup and I, called him one day and I said hey what's the deal and he goes well he goes I'm just not good at raising pups he goes why don't you just take Rhonda back now that she's getting older and you give me a pup back so that's what we did I got her back and I went down to Arkansas and bred Rhonda to a champion uh, in the roe deer competitions that's the horseback mounted cattle herding competitions where they have to herd mixed stock of cattle and sheep so these aren't just sheep dogs. These are, are a little more tenacious uh, line of border collies. And like I say, her, her dad's she a sees champion. Birds. Yeah, she birds. <laughs> so they've got so much work in them. This dog could never make a pet. This dog could never live in a house. Uh, she has way too much drive. Yeah. Like you just look at her eyes right there. She's, she sees a horse uh, 200 yards away. She wants to go work. That's why she's on a leash. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> Now Rhonda has a little bit better of a handle, so I can let her off leash. Um, but even her, she's she's out looking for work right now. Rhonda, come here, babe. Good girl. Come here, hurry. Get out of here, Piney. You're, You're next. You're next, baby girl. Hold on. Hurry, Rhonda. Come on. Good girl. Hi, Rhonda. Okay. So this is Rhonda, the mama. You've seen her work on this the channel. She's a good dog. <laughs> you want me to hold Sissy? No. Okay. <laughs> and I really like Tiny. Rhonda. So like of all the dogs here, the one that I am the most bonded with is probably Rhonda. And uh, so I consider her my dog. 
and I wanted the pup out of her to really bond with me and I had started that with the one named Minnie and if you followed that story no, uh, my neighbor came over to see me one day and he pulled into the parking spot and I mean was creeping to a stop he wasn't even moving and Minnie run up and bit his tire and that was that so I had already started training Minnie and getting her commands underway and I had bonded with her and really felt like she was the one and now just emotionally I have not ever been able to get over that yet and bond with this one so I'm really not doing her justice so I may if a trainer with the right uh, knowledge that knows border collies and knows how to and wants to compete or something I would maybe let her go to a trainer other than that I need to find some way of getting myself attached to this one the way I was to many or else the training just won't work because a dog even more so than a horse has to love you to be able to work for you and um, just like our relationship with God he pours into us love so that we can pour love back into him well that it would work that way between me and the dog I need to be able to pour my love into her so that she pours her love back into me and I'm just still connected to her sister that got that got run over so it's it's hard it's unfortunate I do like her a lot she's, she's a sweet, sweet dog and she's, she's got a sweet. huge drive to work yeah. but her drive to work is so much that she will just ignore me like right there I could yell at her all day long until I'm blue in the face and she wants to go work so <laughs> I don't know Maybe I'll build a pen so I can keep the goats in and start uh, start training her. But that's the two border collies. Let's go meet the next one. Okay, everybody. <laughs> this is our self-petting dog, Piney. She's a full-blood Labrador. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's out of some hunting bloodlines on the mama's side, some champion bloodlines on the mama's side. And on the father's side, just out of some good, a good uh, local breeder. Um, that had a male that a lot of my friends had dogs out of so we know a lot of her pedigree and a lot of her history and about four and a half years ago the kids were wanting a dog so I always had a lot of hunting dogs that I've trained and stuff over the years and they wanted their own so they picked this one out <laughs> and it has fallen in love with Becca to the point that this is now Becca's dog it's only Becca's dog yeah she I mean the dog <laughs> loves everybody she doesn't oh, yeah. know a stranger yeah. but she mourns for Becca when Becca's away. And, and Becca, Becca mourns for her. <laughs> yes, it's ridiculous, the bond that those two have. Yeah. Um, I've had a bond with four dogs like that in my life. Um, so I know what it's like. Uh, maybe five, but, but four for sure. Where it's so strong that it's immeasurable. Um, so that's what we appreciate Piney for. She's going on five years old now and we did breed her one time before and raised one litter of labradoodles because we had some friends that liked piney and were uh would you know would want the pup out of them and it was just fun to have those yeah puppies. and it's, we so just we just do it for fun for the most part but um I, I am a real stickler on where you get your dogs from everybody says just to go rescue dogs and if all you want a dog for is to pet it and for it to be around, then yeah, you can go rescue dogs and I, I encourage you to do that. I expect a lot out of my dogs, so I wanna know their pedigree, their history, where they came from, the purpose and job that I want them to do, and then I want them to love me on top of that. So her first litter too, we she had nine puppies and we kept track of seven of the nine puppies. Oh yeah, I still talk to some of the people. I talk to a, a, a lot, lot of them, them and yeah. I get to see a couple of them quite often. Yeah, one comes one, out here. Yeah, we babysit one, but that one that we babysit, when, when if they go on um, vacations like out of the country, they'll leave it with us. Mm -hmm. He actually graduated as a service dog uh, and went through the whole program where they get tested four different times and graduated all of them top of his class. And there's, his brother actually did that too in St. James. Oh yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how his, his scores went though. But anyway, yeah. two of them are service dogs and now there's been quite a demand for the same cross. Um, so we just bred her again and we haven't found out if she's pregnant yet. But her, <laughs> so sweet baby her belly has changed a little bit. So uh, we do think that she's probably with pups <laughs> and uh, they should be ready for their new homes probably by Christmas. But my father is wanting to keep one to train as a deer hunting dog, a uh, deer antler hunt uh, dog to find the shed antlers and the 
winter time. Aww. So. Tiny. And then after this, so funny, huh? after this litter, we uh, we will probably be we'll be spaying. Yeah, tiny I think so. Too. After this litter, because she's Jesus. after five years old, she's plenty old enough. She doesn't need to reproduce again. Yeah. And Grandpa will keep one of the pups next door, so that'll be fun. <laughs> and she is the sweetest and want a really intelligent dog. And she loves everybody. And just like I was saying, with purposes, <laughs> she actually has a, a job that she performs too for us besides just being our awesome pet. She will trail wounded game from hunters. So my friends around that hunt and work associates and everybody knows that Piney is trained for that. And we get calls every winter and go help recover uh, down game for people. So we enjoy that a lot. It's a lot of fun. We may show that on the Patreon channel this winter a little bit. Um, we won't share it on this YouTube channel because it's just not something everybody's interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly she is Becca's dog though. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> and that's pretty much and it. And <laughs> she's really hard like if you're in a bad mood, this is the good dog to be around because oh she yeah. she will not tolerate She'll love you through it all. Yeah, she will not tolerate anything but happiness. Yeah. One of the sweetest dogs I've ever been around. So this is Parker. She's an Australian <laughs> Shepherd. She's not very old. No, oh, I'd say about a year, not quite. Oh she's just over a year. Yeah, yeah. just over a year. Mm -hmm. A year well, in June. She's intelligent and she's sweet, but she has a lot of drive to do something too, and she's not been focused. So she gets a little annoying because of that. Yes. Um, Her favorite thing to do is chase the four wheel yes. and bark at it. <laughs> yeah, so that's not great. So her deal is uh, my daughter Mary is 18 and she got some of her own money and got a wild hair and went and bought her own dog. <laughs> and then she became our dog, so. That's just how that is. She's got plans to take her with her when she goes to college or whatever. Yeah. We'll see. She's but, not very old. She'll settle down too. The yeah. I think the what is she called? Australian Shepherd. The Australian Shepherds, yeah, are kind of yeah, hyper, hyper until they they're a little older. And then we have where's your dog, bud? Each kid has their own dog. Becca has Piney. Mary has uh, Parker. And then Jules on her way. Come on, Jewel, everybody's waiting. Come on, Jojo. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Bring her to me, bud. Isaac, I know you didn't want to be on YouTube, but you're on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so Jewel of the three pets is mine and Emery's favorite by far. <laughs> Don't tell Becca that about Piney, though. I hope she never watches this. Yeah, <laughs> so. I've had this breed of dog for a lot, uh, a lot of years, and it's an awesome, awesome breed. Of the three breeds that we have as pets here, this is the one that I would recommend to everybody out there to look into if you want a mix of all of the best attributes. Highly intelligent, like a Border Collie. Yep. <laughs> Highly friendly, <laughs> like a Labrador. And, and like makes a good pet like a Lab. Like Border Collies do not make good pets, people. Uh, I don't care. There is some lines that are pet bred that you've taken all the drive out of them. But they're um, still not. But, but, but they're still not, not good pets. They are a working breed and they need a, a handler and a trainer that knows what they're doing. This is a great pet. And <laughs> highly intelligent. I'd say they're smarter than labs, in my opinion. Uh, or at I least, mean, it just, e a at least equi in their smartness. equivalent yeah. smartness. Okay. And then. <sighs> They're also an awesome hunting dog. So this is called a Rocky Mountain Feist, okay? A lot of people will think it's just a Jack Russell Terrier, but it's a Rocky Mountain Feist. It's a- I think it's a meerkat. Yeah, it's a breed that developed in the in the east, in the Rocky Mountains. And what they're used for is they're very, they're very active and they can stand up on their hind legs and tree squirrels. She wants to follow the other dogs. <laughs> Jewel, hold on, go get Piney. Okay. Piney. So, she is the only dog that is not built for winter time. So, <laughs> she gets to come in the house and she's very spoiled on it and she's very intelligent. We did not even have to house train her. She just does it naturally. And some of the really intelligent stuff that she's done is like um when she's done. <laughs> well i'm still gonna tell the story yeah when she's not supposed to be coming in the house and she wants in anyway she'll she'll find a door that was left cracked open or something she'll sneak in and she'll just place one foot down at a time and come really slow 
and then we'll see her and we'll say what are you doing and she'll just take her head and like hide the head behind the deep freeze or behind the, the door <laughs> jam and her body will still be there and her head behind the door jam like she's hiding like we can't see her and we'll say okay you can come in and she'll shoot 100 miles an hour to her chair she has her chair that has a we keep a blanket on it and she'll sh shoot from six feet away and land in that chair and just close her eyes and then she pretends like she's yeah. asleep yeah if you look at her she closes her eyes yeah yeah you if you look at her like what are you doing she'll close her eyes and be like i'm asleep don't wake me up or, or uh, if it's like 100 degrees out she'll go to the back door and start shivering like she's cold so you yeah. let her in <laughs> yeah. this is maggie and bear and they're pyrenees commodore crosses they're what known as livestock guardian dogs so lgds there's several different breeds and people crossbreed them. You stay on yours. So we come down and see them every day and we feed them about a gallon of feed or maybe maybe almost two gallons of feed a day because they're a big breed. You stay and eat yours. And they're pretty sweet. We, You can see Maggie, we had her since a uh, little puppy. You can see her on the channel. And they're really good about staying down here with the sheep. They can get out of all these fences and come to the house if they want to but um, their instinct to guard these sheep and stay down here with the flock is so strong that 99% uh, of the time they're right in the midst of the flock. Like when we drove down here just a minute ago, they were right in the middle of the flock of, uh, how many sheep we got? About 40 with babies. So we got a lot of predators in this area. We got coyotes and black bear, Bigfoot. Um, we actually have a few mountain lions. Mountain lions and some really them. large bobcats. So these dogs stay with the sheep day and night, 24 hours a day, and they mainly just bark. So everybody thinks that their job is to go out and fight and to the death to save the sheep, but they have such a deep, ferocious bark that they just sit in the, in the flock and bark and it keeps the predators away. So. And they're both very young. Yeah, very young. She's Fish. probably six months old. Yeah. And he's probably only three months old, he's four a, months he, old. And his his mama is huge yeah. too. He's gonna be big. So boy. Emery's dad has a couple goats and his livestock guardian dog is just great. Stays with the goats all the time and she's also really people friendly, which is what we want. We don't want them to harm a human ever. So we took uh borrowed his female and bred the litter of pups and that's where we got uh we got bear from and then the, the, she only had two puppies the other puppy my brother has yeah um up at his house now because <laughs> it's very important to know the family tra traits on those wow they ate that gallon really quick mm -hmm. yep. we'll bring them another gallon later tonight be nice mm -hmm. okay let me see you oh you're so cute you're such a pretty girl and they have the softest coats their yeah, their coats are designed to look like it. the sheep so that they blend into the to the flock so that they can guard the sheep better. Mm -hmm. uh, that way the wolves or whatever, wherever they originate from, won't know they're in there. And uh, they'll come in to attack the flock and then the dogs can can do their job. Because they are a powerful breed. If it ever does come down to a fight, they'll stand their ground and and fight the, you know, fight off the predators. Coyotes don't hardly ever have enough guts to actually challenge a dog for a sheep. But in the areas where there's timber wolves, uh, the wolves will, uh, will definitely prey on sheep with, with the dogs around or even prey on the dogs themselves. That's why you always need to have a pair. So I think that's it. That's all of our dogs, isn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. So just a little history on me too. Like I told you, I've been training dogs with my grandpa since I was in diapers, but it hasn't just been beagles. I trained Rhonda to herd. I had another border collie in my, tw in my 20s that I had fully trained to herd. Uh, I've trained those feists like like Jewel, I've had one named Princess that was absolutely the best hunting dog uh, you've ever seen. I've had uh, coon dogs. One of the one of the dogs that I bonded with the most, his name was Bomber. Just to show Emery how much a part of dogs were, uh, how much part of my life dogs were. Um, when I first started dating Emery, and I already had an inkling that she was a special a special person. Um, I wanted to show her how important dogs were to me. So on our third date, when I called her up for a third date, I said, hey, we're going somewhere real important tonight. So dress real nice and, and I'll pick you up and we gotta go on a real important date. And I took her to a litter of pups and had her pick out bomb, what ended up being Bomber, which was my best coon dog. And probably, it's a toss up between him and Anna, but I would say Bomber was my best hunting dog I've ever had. 
um, and and also trained like a pet and he was just he was awesome um, he actually he he died young the best ones a lot of times something unfortunate happens to them but oh thanks for burping in my face that was sweet thank you so yeah, yeah no, I have they are as dog crazy yeah I have <laughs> I have Something a lot of experience, <laughs> a lot of experience with dogs, a lot of experience with raising dogs, and when everybody tells me not to breed dogs, when I know as much as I know about dogs, and they say just adopt, I always respond with the same thing. I say, okay, go pick your husband out of a out of a out of a state prison, or go to the prison to meet your husband, and I'll start adopting dogs because it's the same thing. You're not going to get the same quality and the same type of uh, attributes out of a prison as you will uh, raising and breeding for specific traits and qualities and going to some place reputable to get a dog. But I don't think a lot of people mean don't breed dogs just to make money. You breed dogs. No, they don't want you to breed dogs for anything. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they, they, they... I mean, the only time we breed dogs is... It's so no ingrained in, in the PETA and, and other activist groups have demonized animal husbandry to the point that they don't want you to even own dogs but that people think that breeding dogs now is just taboo and evil and it's i mean where 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 do you expect to get good dogs from if you don't if you don't have somebody that cares enough to preserve traits and lineage and and pedigrees um it just doesn't make sense to me now you need to be responsible for them take care of them as long as i'm able i'll always be breeding and raising dogs for a purpose and taking care of them same with horses you know if if you're not breeding for a specific trait and uh know know the background and the genealogy and the traits that that parent produces and how that trait passes on to the next generation then you're you're just shooting in the dark and you're not going to have the same quality that you would otherwise you can see it in our own foals this year we raised six foals this year one of which we bought at an auction out of an unknown stallion all five of the babies that were born here were will come up and love on us and and are super gentle the one we bought even though she was only a day old still stands off and is isn't as kind and gentle so that just shows you right there how the attitudes differ within breeding and people also kind of shame, try to shame us for not having our dogs inside look at where this dog lives <laughs> This is inside of his pen right now. He is swimming. He's got about he's a catching fish. <laughs> he's got about a three and a half acre pen where he is in with the sheep right now. Hey and there. next week it'll move to another three and a half acres he knows where he'll be in with the sheep. And this is their life. If he wants to go swimming, he goes swimming. If he wants a drink, he gets a drink. They're pretty happy too. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's why we have two of them. So that you know, if there was just one, I don't think they would stay in here as well by themselves. But with the two of them, um, they will, they'll stay good. Okay guys, we hope you enjoyed meeting all of our dogs. And before you click off, if you can give us a thumbs up, we sure would appreciate it. And if you haven't, subscribe to our channel and make sure to turn on your notifications to see future videos. Thank you for watching and we hope you have a wonderful week. We'll talk to you next time.